Hi, this is the fourth episode of the Map Library series, showing you the basics of web map creation. In the previous episodes, we learned how to add points, lines, polygons and pop-ups, and how to style them. In this mini-series, I'll show you how to switch base maps, create a 3D map, and how to create a mini-map. Let's start with the base map switch that will allow your users to change the map. As my base maps, I will use the street map, its light and dark versions, and the satellite map. All these maps can be found in MapTiler Cloud. The link is in the description below. When choosing a base map, think about the purpose of your application. For example, the street map is great for navigation, the basic for data visualization, and an outdoor map for hiking. Let's begin. You can copy the code for the starter map from the tutorial. The link is in the description below. To make this map work, you must add your MapTiler API key where the placeholder text is. Go to the API keys page on your MapTiler Cloud account and create a new key for your map. The default style for the map we have created is a street map, but you can change this to a different base map that better suits your application simply by changing the style URL. To do that, go to MapTiler Cloud and click on New Map. Select the map and the colour version you want to use, then click Use this map. Now copy the link below Use Vector Style. If you look at the style links closely, you can see that the only part which is changing is the ID of the map. We can store all of the IDs of the maps that we want in a constant called base maps. For each map style, we'll also need an image that we'll use to represent it as an icon on the switch. You can create static images like this using the MapTiler Static Maps API, which is available on the paid MapTiler Cloud plans. To generate your map icon, choose a map style and then scroll down to the static map as an image section. Click on the Generator for Static Maps button and select the area that you want to appear on the icon. Next, copy the center-based URL and paste it into your code. Finally, change the map IDs to get the same area in a different style for each icon. To modify the style JSON in your map constant, you need to define the initial style of your map, the one that users will see when it first opens. For this, you can use the object key method with the base maps variable as an argument, and use the value of the initial style variable in the URL. So far, your map should look the same. Now, let's think about how our base map switch should work. It should be a map control which will accept all the possible base maps and the initial base map. To define the parameters in the control, we can use the new constructor style switcher control, and we should define the position of this control over the map. To make the switch work, you need to define the style switcher control class. Map controls in MapLibre can be implemented as classes with the onAdd and onRemove methods. We should also define the constructor in this class. The constructor will receive two attributes, but you can define them as options. Object options will get the value of constructor argument options. The container of this constructor will be a new div. Now you can add styling for this control. There will be three classes, matlibregl-control, which is the default style class for controls, the control style in general, and by default the control is open, so to start it closed we need to add the class closed. It's also necessary to define what will happen if the mouse enters and leaves the switch. When the mouse enters the control you want to remove the closed class and when it leaves you want to add this class back again. After adding the styling classes to your constructor, you need to define them. 
you can copy all the necessary style codes from the written tutorial. Notice that there's a defined class called Base Map Active. This will add an orange border to the active map. There's also a class Base Map, which styles individual base map icons, and a class called Close. We will use these classes in the onAdd method. The onAdd method always uses the parameter map. Using onAdd, we want our control to look at our constant base map and for every key, create an image that will trigger the change of base map. The onAdd method can access the constant base map through the constructor option base maps. Then it needs to loop through the base map list variable, where for each map ID, for example streets, it will create an image that represents the base map. To loop through the base map list, you can use the object keys method together with the for each method. For each base map, you need to create a base map container, which will be an image element. Now let's get the attributes for the map ID. You can define the source of the base map image, and you also need to add the style classes for this container. Finally, add a unique ID to each map. Now is the time to define what will happen when you click on the image of a different base map. First, you need to define which container is currently active. Then remove the class active from it and add it to the base map container you clicked on. But which element is active on the initial load before any click happens? It's the one that matches the initial base map with its map ID. And then you need to update the style with the map set style. For set style, you need to define the style URL. And optionally, you can define diff, which if set to false will force a full update. The style URL should use the same structure we used with the map ID from the map. When you define the click event, we'll add the base map container to the switcher control and return this container. The last thing that you need to define is the onRemove method. In this, you unregister a control on the map and give it a chance to detach event listeners and resources. Basically, we are removing the event listeners and freeing up resources. Now your switch should work. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. We are always keen to hear what else you want to learn about, so let us know in the comments below. See you next time, where I'll show you how to create a 3D map. Bye for now.